Today, uh, we're looking at uh, Pentecostalism. What is Pentecostalism? Um, it's a movement that uh, stresses speaking in tongues as a second blessing. Uh, they say you must first receive the Holy Spirit when you are saved, but you are not filled with or baptized with the Holy Spirit until you are speaking in tongues. The uh, Pentecostal movement came out of the holiness movement that came from Methodism. They believed in the distinction between the ordinary and sanctified Christians. Uh, they claimed sanctification was a second work of grace that perfected a Christian. In, in the 1800s, the uh, Methodists became secularized, and they no longer emphasized their distinctive doctrines. The holiness movement then began. Uh, this was an effort to return the church to its historic uh, beliefs and practices. Uh, when it became evident they were not going to change the church, they formed the various holiness sects. Uh, Pentecostalism <clears throat> is a movement that came out of the holiness movement at the turn of the 20th century. It was uh, uh, because of two people, Charles Parham, uh, who was born in 1873, died in 1929, and he was the founder of the Bethel Bible College in Topeka, Kansas as a haven for those seeking divine healing. And the other one was William Seymour. He was born 1870 and died in 1922. And he was an uh, African-American holiness evangelist that was from Louisiana. Uh, after he founded the uh, Bible school in Topeka, Parham uh, uh, toured the uh, uh, Holy Ghost and U.S. Bible School in Shiloh, Maine. And there he heard uh, speaking in tongues by the missionaries. He became convinced that the premillennial return of Christ would be preceded by a worldwide revival and outpouring of the Holy Spirit. He believed the gifts of the Holy Spirit that were evident in apostolic times were available to Christians today. So when he established a school at Bethel, he asked his students to examine Acts 2 and learn the biblical signs of spirit baptism. Uh, one of his students begins speaking in tongues, and then about half of the other students at the school then begin speaking in tongues. Then when Parham uh, uh, preached, he preached uh, speaking in tongues. It was the only evidence that one had received the baptism with the Holy Ghost and also taught that it should be part of a normal Christian worship. So in 1905, uh, 1905 Parham uh, started the Bible school in Houston to train evangelists. And a black student, uh, one we mentioned just previously, uh, 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 W.J. Uh, Seymour, attended a 10-week training session. And then he went to Los Angeles, and he conducted a prayer meeting in Los Angeles in April of 1906. He then rented an old Methodist church building at 312 Azusa Street uh, and began a large revival lasting for several months. The biggest thing of this revival was the Holy Spirit baptism was evidence of speaking in tongues. This has been regarded as the beginning of the Pentecostal movement. <clears throat> Uh, this was the beginning of nearly all Pentecostal groups and, and laid the groundwork for the Pentecostal movements. From there, it spread across America. Uh, this uh, Pentecostal doctrine, also uh, uh, known as the full gospel or the four square gospel, and this stresses the ministry of Christ as fourfold. Christ is the Savior, the Sanctifier, the Healer, and the coming King. So, Parham uh, uh, began this movement, uh, uh, although he began this movement, he fell aside as others took over and expanded the ministry. Parham was unable to regain the leadership of the movement uh, he began. And in 1907, uh, he was involved in a sodomy scandal and was unable to regain any prominence after that. And from this time till his death in 1929, he spent nearly all of his time outside of the emerging Pentecostal movement. Uh, so let me give you a list of the Pentecostals and charismatic churches that came out of this movement. And this isn't all of them, but it was the Assemblies of God. That's probably the biggest. 
and the Church of the Living God and the Churches of God uh, of, in uh, Cleveland, Tennessee, Church of God of Prophecy, the Church uh, of God in Christ, the Full Gospel Churches, the Four Square Gospel Churches, the United Pentecostal Churches, Jesus Only, Apostolic Faith Churches, Elam Fellowship Churches, Vineyard Churches International, and then there's Baptist Pentecostals, and many, many more. So looking at the Assemblies of God, we find that it was formed in 1914 when uh, some other churches joined together at Hot Springs, Arkansas. They broke away from the Holiness Churches because they believed, like other Pentecostal churches, that the baptism of the Holy Spirit was evidenced by speaking in tongues. They are non-Calvinist, but Pentecostal in doctrine and stress speaking in tongues, divine healing, women pastors, slain in the spirit, and so on. But they're not uh, only, uh, they're ecumenical. They use the new versions of the Bible, women's hair, makeup, and so on. And they are a heretical group. The Bible doesn't teach any of that. Uh, Pentecostalism began with uh, A. A. Allen and Oral Roberts, Morris Cirillo, Jim and Tammy Baker, Jimmy Swigert, who was caught several times with prostitutes, and Benny Hinn. Uh, they believe uh, that uh, people today can have the same gifts as the apostles had. They believe they have power to heal and power to cast out disease. However, Benny Hinn once said, if you have some one body in your family die, leave their body in the living room. Take the body over to the TV and drape it over, drape their arms over the TV. Because God is going to use me to raise the dead through the television. Uh, I don't know. I hope you see how ridiculous this is. <clears throat> and it's really a form of uh, cruelty. <clears throat> This should make it clear that Pentecostalism is not biblical. <clears throat> uh, Benny Hinn and other uh, Pentecostals that use the media to preach their lies uh, know they are deceivers and they know how to be good at it. Uh, they make millions of dollars uh, spreading their lies. They include preachers like, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> they include preachers like Joyce Myers. And, and you can see my video about Joyce Myers on this channel. And then there's T.D. Jakes. Uh, it's also included in this mess and, take, uh, and it takes in millions of dollars. And when Jesus sent his 12 disciples out, he sent them out to heal, not to collect or make money. So look at uh, 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 Luke chapter 9, verses uh, 1 through 3. It says, Then he called his uh, 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over devils and to, and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And he said unto them, Take nothing for your journey, neither stage nor script, neither bread, neither, neither money, nor have two, pieces, uh, two coats apiece. Uh, can men and women make a fortune by pretending to heal the sick? Yes, they can. And in this movement, uh, there is probably a true body of believers that are not to, to be confused with the movement. The movement is filled with dreamers, schemers, con men and women making a false theology and false teachers that try to take advantage of people and do take advantage of all that would believe them. Uh, others that are in the middle, like the Word of Faith movement, has false teachers like Fred Price, Kenny Copeland, Kenneth Hagin, Marilyn Higgy, Joyce Meyer, and so on. They have false views of the nature of Christ. And these claim that when Jesus was on the cross, he became a sinner and had to go to hell and suffer for his sins for three days. And then the Father allowed him to come out of hell, and that is uh, when he was raised. They are making the second person of the Trinity, Jesus Christ, a sinner that had to be punished in hell. And this is a false teaching and is heresy. Uh, Christ never committed one sin, and he went to the paradise side of hell. Kenneth Copeland also stated that Jesus wasn't any more God than he is. So I don't understand how anyone could even listen to these heretical teachers, let alone believe them. Uh, 
Kenneth Copeland is nowhere near what God is and never will be. And uh, we are uh, to study for ourselves to find the truth of God's word as shown in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses uh, 15. Music in these churches is informal and more of a uh, contemporary nature and old-fashioned singing of hymns is absent. Those in attendance feel free to dance during the service and go to the altar whenever they desire. They are free to praise God in heavenly prayer languages of tongues. In the 1950s, a new Pentecostal group of people called the Neo-Pentecostal Movement appeared and gradually increased and was assuming the name Charismatic. Uh, the groundwork for this uh, movement was led by the Full Gospel Business Men's Fellowship International and David Duplices in the 1950s. Uh, the beginning of the charismatic movement was in 1960 by a preacher named Dennis Bennett, a member of St. Mark's Episcopal, Episcopal Church in Van Nuys, California. He introduced speaking in tongue to several members of that, of that church, and the charismatic movement spread rapidly from there. The neo-Pentecostal movement is like the uh, traditional Pentecostalism because they both emphasize uh, the Holy Spirit with the initial evidence of speaking in tongues. Present institutions are to be uh, renewed by charismatic activity of the Holy Spirit as it affects the membership of the church or other group. Uh, that's because it is through a continued presence with the individuals who have been baptized in the Spirit. There are more than 200 Pentecostal denominations, and the largest is the Assembly of God, which was started in 1914. They believe a, a two-stage conversion process and a congressional, congregational government. However, the Church of God in Cleveland, Tennessee, and the Pentecostal Holiness Churches are two of the most important denominations. They believe in a three-stage uh, con, uh, conversion process with sanctification, being separated from both salvation and Holy Spirit baptism. So Holy Spirit baptism, speaking in tongues, is what holds this movement together. And uh, uh, we'll look at more at it later in, in some other videos, but uh, uh, that is not the teaching of the Bible. It is uh, uh, also more important than doctrine, they say. It is to be an experiential Christianity with its experience in culminating in the baptism of the believer in the Holy Spirit, like it was at Pentecost when they spoke in other tongues. And that is a uh, heritage of teaching. And uh, thank you for listening. And we will end uh, here.